this one is another one where I think it's a little bit more realistic than the last one I just listed, but I don't like this. I don't like this trade for a variety of reasons. Welcome back to another episode of the Broncos Avenue Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Amir Farrell, back at you guys with another episode this week. Capping off the week with some uh, Denver Broncos rumors. I know a lot of fans are talking about the potential possibility of Justin Simmons, longtime Denver Broncos safety returning to the team on a cheap uh, one-year deal, the possibility of that. Going to discuss that. And then also the Broncos. Uh, in a few mock drafts, the Denver Broncos by a few NFL draft analysts are predicted to trade up for a specific quarterback becoming more and more likely as we are seeing in a lot of these mock drafts. Lots to jump in today's episode. Um, I have a few shout outs to give at the end of the episode, so make sure you guys stay tuned to the very end for that. Lots to talk about. Make sure if you're listening on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below at any point what you guys think about these mock trades, um, the Justin Simmons stuff. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into all of that and more. Um, let's start off with the Justin Simmons stuff. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around a little bit right now, not by necessarily like like national insiders and whatever, but mainly amongst the fan base, there's still a lot of speculation out there that Justin Simmons now being, it's been like um, around almost nearly a month now since the Denver Broncos have parted ways with Justin Simmons after several seasons being one of the best safeties, not only in Denver, but in the entire NFL. Uh, we've said it multiple times on the pod after games last season. We truly do believe that Justin Simmons is the best safety in football. I still don't necessarily agree with the decision to move on from him, but the Broncos felt it was ultimately the best interest of the team's salary cap situation and the future and youth of their, their safety position moving forward. So, Will Justin Simmons return though? That's the that's the biggest question around because his market is unexpectedly became a lot more drier than he expected, a lot more um, dry and not as um, you know exciting as a lot of NFL fans thought it would be. I know I see him getting linked to the Titans right now, the Steelers, the the Eagles because of the Vic Fangio connection dating back to his Denver days, um, where he was the defensive player play caller. So. It's interesting to see where he could go, but it's also the most interesting just with the fact that he has not been signed yet. It's honestly insane, the impact that he had here in Denver, uh, both in the community, on and off the field, um, especially on the field, man. Um, ball hawk safety, one of the best players in f football in general. He's easily the best free, free agent available right now. So it's just very surprising to see him not signed yet. So for the Broncos' sake, though, um, the Broncos' current safety room includes P.J. Locke, Brandon Jones, I would expect those two guys to be the starters with Caden Stearns being inserted in, in, in and out of the lineup, kind of like how P.J. Locke was before uh, Cream Jackson got suspended. Then he kind of came like the full-time starter, and obviously he's on that two-year deal now. Brandon Jones got the three-year $20 million deal. Um, just between those two safeties, that's like – Justin Simmons was scheduled to make $18.25 million as a cap it in only 2024 so the fact that you get those two guys and those relatively very cheap deals like pj lock is a hell of a safety honestly in my opinion better than brandon jones as just just an overall safety he's almost nearly as well at blitzing and he's a better coverage safety and the broncos only got him on like a two-year seven million dollar deal this is ridiculously good value um i'm hoping that we can get him another contract in the future and he gets a bigger payday than that but they also have kate and Stearns in that room, JL Skinner, DeLarn Turniel, who obviously tore his ACL late in the season. So he might not make the team. We'll, we'll see. I don't think he will. I'm not the biggest fan of his play, but I'm hoping he does heal up and gets the opportunity wherever it is next um, to ball out. I'll, I'll, I'll do respect to DeLarn Turniel, DTY. But at the end of the day, I just don't see Justin Simmons returning to the Denver Broncos. And I wrote about this for Predominantly Orange, like I mentioned um, earlier in the episode. Just because of how many safeties are currently in the in the room right now, they're still going to maybe add late in the draft or at the bare minimum sign an undrafted free agent um, or they're going to sign a player to a futures contract at some point. Like, the, There's just no reason for Justin Simmons to return for both sides, honestly. Um, I would I would have loved for him to just stay in the first place and not have had to sign Brandon Jones. I lo Look, I like Brandon Jones, but I just think Justin Simmons is a better player. And I feel like they could have worked out some kind of extension where they could have pushed back that money a little bit. Who knows what truly happened behind the doors there. I know there were some rumors about the Broncos trying making it work with him. Ultimately, he's not here anymore. The Broncos save 
a lot of money by moving on from him. Um, and because of that, I just don't see the Broncos bringing him back. The Broncos clearly do not value the safety position as high as some people may think. Um, and for anybody thinking that I'm crazy for even covering this topic on an episode, I get asked it pretty much every day. Are the Broncos bringing Justin Simmons back? I see it in several comment sections. Um, it's still, it's still, a, you know, a topic being entertained um, for whatever reason. I understand like the fact that his market isn't as high as many expected that maybe the Broncos can bring him back on that much cheaper deal because the reason they even moved off him in the first place is because of the money. So if they do bring him back, like, Oh, Amir, can we bring him back on a one year, three ish million dollar deal, whatever it is? I just don't see that being the case. I honestly still think he's going to get like pretty solid money in free agency. He's probably only going to sign like a one year deal with the Eagles or something just to prove it. Um, you know, obviously, as he's now 30 years old, um, turning 31 in November, still think he's relatively young for the production that he's giving you in a secondary, but uh, the Broncos clearly disagreed in terms of his, uh, you know, salary cap and all that um also another reason why just simmons won't come back is simmons wants to start and reasonably so he deserves it he's a hell of a player like i said the bet easily easily top three safety in football i think we can all agree there it's a toss-up between him minka derwin james um all great safeties and not only uh the afc but the nfl in general so I think for that reason, he's not going to want to come here where P.J. Locke and Brandon Jones are the expected starters. Um, he already has, The Broncos have already issued their goodbye statement to Simmons. He's already issued their, his goodbye statement to Broncos country. The Broncos, he's even like publicly like stated in a tweet that the, he's basically passing the torch to P.J. Locke. Like he's looking forward to seeing ball out. So at this point, it's pretty obvious that the Broncos have moved on mutually and Justin Simmons is looking looking to go elsewhere. So um, that pretty much wraps up all the Justin Simmons stuff. Would be extremely shocked if he comes back um, at any point in this offseason. It's just very, very shocking the, um, the most, like I said, the fact that he hasn't even signed with the team yet. kind of reminds me of you, you a little bit of the Dalton Reisner situation last year where it took him a long time to sign. It would be even more surprising if they if he didn't even find a home till after the draft, which is looking more and more like for reality because the draft is literally less than three weeks away. But let's go ahead and talk about some of these mock drafts. I'm going to name two scenarios that two draft analysts, one from Bleacher Report and one from NFL.com listed. You guys let me know in the comments, which one do you think is more realistic and which one would you do? I'm going to give out the mock trades. Let me know. The first one is from Chad Ryder. Uh, his mock draft at NFL.com, um, lead NFL draft or not lead NFL, but one of the draft analysts over there. Um, he has the Broncos trading a 2025 first, a 2025 third, plus this year's 12th overall pick to move up for the fourth overall pick with the Arizona Cardinals to select Michigan's JJ McCarthy, um, at number four. I don't think this one is realistic just because of what we're giving up. And the fact that we're moving up eight spots, he had after this trade, he did have the Cardinals moving back up from the twelfth overall pick to number eight to select. I think it was a Um I don't think it's super realistic uh, here in Ryder's mock draft, but this man, if we could pull this off, I would. I would love this. You're not giving up Sertan to move into the top four for one one of the top quarterbacks who honestly has been getting a lot of buzz lately to go even as high as the second overall pick. I mean, this is a great this is a great trade in my opinion. Only giving up a 2025 first, this year's 12th overall pick. I mean, essentially that's a pick swap. So I mean, who cares about giving up that 12th? That's literally a pick swap. You're giving up next year's first, and then only a third and a pick swap. That's a that's a great trade. That's great value for the Broncos, and you're also getting what I think is a hell of a player in JJ McCarthy. Um, I've said it multiple times. I think out of all the quarterbacks in this draft, he is schematically the best fit for what Sean Payton wants in a quarterback like right now. Um, obviously, Sean Payton can adjust to any of his quarterbacks that he brings in. You saw him adjust to Russell Wilson and get the best out of him last year. Like He can adjust well. We saw that a lot uh, in New Orleans, even after Drew Brees left. Like He was maximizing the quarterback um, you, you know, skill sets that he had with Ian Book, Jameis Winston, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. You can list them all, but I think this, yeah, this is a really good trade for the Broncos. This next one I want to list is from Joan Tanzi of Bleacher Report. He has the Broncos trading their 2024 first, third, fifth, 
and six to move up to the ninth overall pick with the Chicago Bears for J.J. McCarthy. This one is another one where I think it's a little bit more realistic than the last one I just listed, but I don't like this. I don't like this trade for a variety of reasons. Um, you're giving up literally that's four picks just to move up three spots for McCarthy. Also, the fact that McCarthy is sliding in the nine doesn't seem too realistic. Um, while that is a lot of draft picks that you're trading up, I do under I do understand it because the Vikings are the biggest threats to the Broncos to trade up for JJ McCarthy. So I do think you will have to give up like an unnecessary amount to outbid the Vikings for um to you know to move up for McCarthy. Um, but at the same time, man, that's almost your entire draft to move up three spots. I mean, I, I understand you got to do whatever you can to get your quarterback. Let me know what you guys think. 2024 first, 2024 third. These are all 2024 picks. A first, third, fifth, and sixth just to move up three spots for for McCarthy with the Chicago Bears. That That's a, that's a tough one uh, from Bleacher Report's uh, mock draft. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about that one. Um, Look, I'm not super I'm not like entirely opposed to it. I really like McCarthy. I mean, you look at it, McCarthy's entire makeup, great poise inside the pocket, great deep ball placement. Make he can make really any throw all over the field that you need him to. Um he's incredible both from within the pocket and outside of the pocket. He has legs, man. He's I've said it a lot. He, the the dude can move. Um I just I don't know if either of these trades are very realistic, I really do like Chad Ryder's mock draft though. The, oh, I mean, goodness, trading a first uh, next year and then a third and then only swapping the fourth and 12th overall picks. I mean, that's just, if the Broncos could pull that off, that would be awesome. I just don't know if that's very realistic. That's moving up eight whole spots with the Cardinals. I just don't know if the Cardinals would necessarily do that just because of the receiver talent that'll be available there at four. But like I said, uh, in that mock draft, he has the Broncos, or excuse me, he has the Cardinals moving back up from the 12th to the 8th and selecting Odunze, which I don't even know if Odunze, I mean, Odunze will probably be there at 8, but um, I really like Odunze personally. He's my favorite receiver in the draft, but just for the Cardinals' sakes, I don't, the Cardinals' sake, I don't know if um, Austin Fort, their GM, would do that, but you, you, you truly never know. But with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. A little bit of a shorter episode um, just because we don't have the co-hosts on today. But make sure you guys are staying tuned on the pod. The next episode we'll have is our mock draft, um, our mock draft Monday. So be on the lookout for that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, like I mentioned very early in the episode, is give me all some uh, shout outs. I was looking into like the analytics for um, the podcast on YouTube specifically. Um, I'm big on like numbers and analytics and everything. And I was looking at the geography aspect for the Broncos Avenue podcast. And this podcast has been listened in 35 different countries. This is in the last 28 days. In the last 28 days, this podcast on YouTube alone exclusively has been listened to in 35 different countries around the world. Thank you guys so much for the support. Once again, March was an incredible month. I mentioned this in our last in the live stream we had the other night. If you guys were there, it was it was a great live stream. Make sure you guys check that out if you didn't over on YouTube. Um, the the support in March was just amazing, and the fact that we're only uploading like max three episodes a week is just awesome. I really do appreciate you guys. Want to try grinding more of these episodes out? Just terms of like scheduling and busyness, it isn't always the easiest, but really gonna try to do our best with that. Um, like I said, 35 different countries listen to this pod. Only on you that's only on YouTube. Spotify, it's probably there's probably even more countries than just that. Um I want to give some shout outs to some of those countries as well. Obviously, the US are number one most listened to country. Um, Canada, Mexico, Australia, the UK, Germany, India, Russia, Brazil, South Africa, the Philippines, New Zealand, France, Japan. Italy, Ireland, those are our top those are our top countries. Uh you got the Netherlands, Indonesia, Indonesia, Spain, the Bahamas. Like shout out to all you guys. If you're listening on YouTube and even if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to, like comment down below, shoot me a message on Instagram. I really do appreciate you guys. Um I I like did this over on my story the other day as well where I had people um like comment and, and like uh 
drop a comment of where they listen to um, the podcast. And it's just, it's overwhelming to see like all the support and not just like just the audience out there in the amount of countries that are listening to the show. So I really do appreciate you guys. Um, if you're listening over there on Spotify as well, make sure you guys follow, leave a five-star rating um, and turn notifications on so you never miss an episode. I'm going to continue to come hard with this draft content as, like I said, the draft is just less than three weeks away. But with that being said, I'm your host, Amir Farrell. To the next episode, peace out, everybody.